What's going on YouTube? Welcome to this video today and I am going to be covering Ethereum and answering probably a question that many of you guys have. Uh, will we reach all time highs? Well, wait no longer because after watching this video, I hope that you will get a little bit more insight in the way that I'm viewing the charts and what we can expect and the levels in between before we reach all time highs and what to look out for and the way that one could possibly look to chart and trade it. So I hope, I thoroughly hope you enjoy this video and let's begin, enjoy. And uh, if you like the content, then hit our like and subscribe button so you will stay up to date with every new video that we post. And uh, all that's left to say is let's begin. So the question is, will Ethereum reach all-time highs anytime soon? Will Ethereum reach the magic price of 4,400 once again and then surpass it, get rejected? Or is this all just a big bull trap and will we see much lower prices? So let's dive into it. Um, the way I would like to begin is first to take a look at the, uh, at the Ethereum Bitcoin pair because in the end, Ethereum, the Ethereum pair, the Bitcoin pair, so to speak, is the base of what the USD pair is doing uh, in the end. So uh, it basically boils down to if the Bitcoin pair is doing well, then naturally the USD pair would uh, is naturally doing also pretty well. You know, so of course, it's also packed to Bitcoin, but I don't really want to overcomplicate these things. Uh, I'm using the, the Bitcoin chart as, as a ground uh, as a framework, as a blueprint for what I'm going to look for on the USD pair. Um, so let's begin. Um, I always like to begin to first zoom out and look into the bigger time frame because if you do not know what has happened in the past, then it's really difficult to predict what's going to happen in the future. This is the nature of technical analysis. Technical analysis is you use past price data to uh, to make a plan for the future, essentially. So if you don't have if you don't have the context of what has happened in the past, then it's really difficult to know what's going to happen from here on out. So let's begin. Um, I've already did a little bit of preparation work because about half a year ago uh, we have broken out of a very large accumulation zone. Um, this is a this is a technical pattern that became much more, I, I would say, got a lot of traction lately uh, due to the Bitcoin drop in price where a lot of people were claiming that we were in a wick of distribution pattern. So... Um, Probably many people are now nowadays more familiar with the pattern. Um, on Bitcoin, I would not necessarily say it was actually wick of distribution because in my opinion, this is more how wick of distribution actually looks like. Um, over the course of uh, essentially two years almost, we have been in a sideways range, uh, building the cause for an explosive move to the upside. And the result is essentially uh, literally that. So we have defined the range to the upside over here, tested it twice on a high term time frame. As you can see, I'm on the three days uh, chart. We've defined a low, tested that low as well, and established the midline of the range as well, which has also been really well respected. This entire process took about, I would say, two and a half years, um, basically. And while these levels were getting really established, the more uh, the more times they're essentially tested, the, the more relevant the levels become. And in the end, this range will break. Um, the longer it takes, the more explosive the move will be. Uh, so this is exactly what has happened. At the first, we had a sign of strength over here coming, uh, uh, coming into here, into this, into this little section. And we got a rejection over there, um, back into the range. And from there on out, we have, in the end, finally broken out of the range for good on an increase in volume and technically all very well, which resulted in a massive increase in price of 175% since then. After that, we have been going more or less a little bit sideways. So now is the, that is the right time to zoom in a little bit as to what has been happening um, more recently. And what really has happened more recently is we have been forming a very well-known pattern, which I would class as a descending triangle, where you have a very well-defined 
downward sloping trend line and uh, you have a very well defined bottom of that. As you can see, it in the end did not play out very well because it turned out to be uh, to, to be a more of a bullish triangle, whereas the descending triangle is a more bearish triangle. And this is the thing. If you are aware of the, of, of the context of breaking out of a long-standing range, uh, being in, an, in a macro uptrend, so to speak, then a descending triangle in the middle of a, of a certain trend um, does not really make a lot of sense. So just identifying a certain pattern and just simply trading off of it can not be the best idea in that sense. Uh, you have to be aware of the context. So for this reason, it is for me personally not surprising at all that we actually broke this pattern to the upside. And that is where you can extend this trend line more sideways because you might as well establish a new sideways range. And that is the moment where multiple levels also come into play, which I have already laid out and prepared for you. As you can see, we have the top of this range and slightly above it, we have a uh, the, what is, something that is referred to as the golden pocket. At Chart Champions, we refer to this as the CC. And we have a, uh, have a level where one of the weekly closes have occurred. So if you would zoom out to this, then you can clearly say that this is immediate resistance. If you would measure that to the potential upside, you can essentially get about 11% to the upside. Should we, let's say, break through the range to the upside, backtest that, then that is the moment where the next level would come into play. And guess what? It is already here on the chart, which is the place where the latest monthly close has occurred all the way back on the 1st of February. Um, and this is not the only level because once this level has been uh, has been reclaimed, then what you can do is simply move back this Fibonacci pool one pivot, and there you have the confluence with the six six onto the monthly level, which naturally is resistance. Only if we reclaim this level, and afterwards if we then reclaim this level, only then, only then one can expect all time highs. These are the levels that need to be reclaimed. The message that I'm trying to send here is if you have other levels that first need to be reclaimed, why would you expect all time highs? Because as long as these levels are not being reclaimed, one must assume that these levels are going to provide at the very least some form of resistance. Even if it doesn't happen, it's still best to assume this because that can help you decide to, for example, take profit um, and, and protect your capital as, uh, essentially. So this is what is really, really important. Uh, this weekly level, very important, and this monthly level also very important. So now that we have built this context on the BTC chart, let's move over to the USD chart and see what we, how we correlate these two charts together, right? So measuring the percentage wise, what we can expect from this level for the first resistance to come in into the weekly level, we could say like, okay, this has about 12% to go. And if we then reclaim this level from there on out, you have yet another 30% to go, totaling in about from here on out, uh, about 47%. So keeping those percentages in mind, now let's flip into the USD pair. Um, as you can see, again, a little bit of context building. Uh, I've already done some preparation work. I've put two levels on, which I deem very, very important. Uh, and you might also notice that the chart looks completely different as the BTC pair. Nonetheless, you can use the information from the Bitcoin chart for, to the USD chart. And I'm going to show you how and I'm going to show you how they correlate with each other. So first of all, again, a little bit of context building. We have put in an all time high. We've retraced very deeply from there, uh, essentially hitting this old consolidation area, so to speak, uh, and weekly uh, one of the weekly closes uh, coming, coming from all the way from here. And then if you would pull a Fibonacci level from the low to the, to the high, uh, it lines up exactly with that weekly level. And more importantly, it hit exactly to the exact dollar. So this is the moment where technical analysis works. And this is the proof that technical analysis works. Um, 
it hit to the exact dollar and that was in the end the low of the entire drop of Ethereum because it never retraced past it. It did backtest it two times just to make sure that there was enough strength to move up again. And that is exactly what has happened. And also here, we have also had a range, not a descending triangle, but instead in the USD chart, it resulted in somewhat of an upward sloping, uh, sloping channel. And uh, bringing us to the same conclusion, and that has also broken to the upside right now. Now, if I would zoom out to the weekly level, um, the latest weekly close or the highest one that there is on the entire chart is set at 3,930. Now, how much, how far does that uh, take us uh, percentage wise? So if we would just measure that out, we have 10 and a half percent. Now, remember the percentages we just went over that equals pretty much on the other chart, kind of the same amount, right? 10%, 10% ish, uh, give or take 2%. Um, so it is very, very relevant. So if the Bitcoin pair is going to hit resistance on that uh, particular weekly level, then one can expect that uh, this price on the USD pair also to rise to the weekly level before meeting a stern reaction. Um, and for the USD pair, obviously that there, there's no real level above that anymore. Uh, so if we do reclaim that, then on the USD pair, one would expect new all time highs, uh, so to speak. That brings us almost as, uh, to the, to wrapping up this video of today. Uh, the purpose of this video was to give you a quick no nonsense, uh, video explaining you how to correlate a, a Bitcoin chart with the USD pair, as well as giving, uh, my perspective on how I view the Ethereum chart in particular. And if we can expect all time highs, what is needed, uh, for all time highs, what do we need? To, what levels do we need to reclaim for all time highs? And with that, I would say trade level to level, watch the reactions at, at each level, make an informed decision and keep your risk management in check. Trade humble, stay humble and be kind to people. My name is Mike and I'm a technical analyst uh, and a coach in Chart Champions. And if you want to see more videos then, of me, then hit that like and subscribe button. And uh, all that's left to say, thank you ever so much for watching and see you in the next video. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye.